So tell me how we ended up here in your backyard, or how did you end up in your backyard, you know, as a farmer versus out in Viroqua or someplace? Right, right. Well, I started out uh, farming rurally and um, on rented land, and uh, my wife and I had probably a, a three-year search where we courted many landowners and tried to make a compelling case of why they should sell their land to us below market value because we because we couldn't afford market value, you know, sure. even for a few acres. And so, um, what happened is we just we'd get we'd get so close and we'd think that we were you know had convinced someone to give us a deal and then at the last minute it would it would fall through so we just we resolved that we would uh, look for a place in town that had some land associated with it and that we would make the best go of it and okay. uh, and at that time it had occurred to me that um, doing seedling production in a small greenhouse in the city there could be some good income associated with that. Sure. And so up to this year it's been a profitable avocation rather than my full-time job. Mm -hmm. But um, the more I do it, the more I love it, and the more I want to make it into a full-time job. Maybe um, teaching on the side, teaching about what I'm doing, sure. as well as doing it, and blending that together to be my, mm -hmm. my full-time job. But in the meantime, I'm a teacher in the public schools, and that's a really important job for me as well. So okay. I'm, I don't take my commitment to that lightly. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're you know we are in a ma in Madison in a in a lot right. on a lot. Right. And this is a viable farm. It is a viable farm. This is called a greenhouse, right? Well, it, um, I don't know. Some people call it a hoop house. Some people call it a greenhouse. It's uh, homemade. It measures uh, 10 feet wide by 40 feet long. Okay. And I can get uh, 200 um, flats like this in here at a time. This is where I love to spend time in the in the springtime. It's sure. just uh, warm and cozy. The the plants are robust and healthy, and I see them grow a little bit every day. And um, and uh, I think about these going to gardeners in Madison and and beyond and it makes me feel like I'm really providing a valuable service getting uh, healthy plants into people's gardens. Here's a here's a grown-up tomato that this has been in here for about um, five or six weeks okay. um, and this is a, another stage of that same plant so these guys were planted um, about uh, two weeks ago, so they're they're up and these guys are ready to go into bigger pots um, Probably this week And you'll be selling these at the market, is that correct? I will, as, yeah as, uh, as the as the big boys here in these in the this size pot so this okay. that all the seedlings um, sell for uh, 375 a piece or six for 21 so if you okay. buy a six pack you, you save a dollar fifty Niagas which is a Polish uh, purple heirloom I have uh, Rosso Sicilian which is from Italy Opalka um, another Polish heirloom um, I'm a French teacher so I have quite a few French varieties I have Anana Noir which is translates to black pineapple I have jaune flamme which is uh, yellow flame which is a nice salad size orange tomato that is super sweet and is one of the earliest tomatoes um, and then a lot of American heirlooms like Cherokee purple and brandy wine um, Amish paste nice. um, yeah lots so many it's hard to it's hard to remember all of them but I would say probably probably 20 25 different varieties of, of tomatoes um, and so coming on back here we've got basil chives fennel oregano um, Swiss chard and chervil uh, wow. lettuces uh, nasturtium parsley celery yeah Lots of good stuff. And that's, just, stuff. In the, and that's just in the hoop house. That's just in the hoop house. And so there's more that's growing in the, in the ground outside. And then we've got uh, quite a few other varieties that are hardening off in the cold frame outside. Great. Yeah. It's an unprecedented spring. Um, I know that uh, I'm not the only grower that's really risked 
planting things early this year. So um, the garlic is something that is, I'd say it's pretty far along this year. Um, it comes, it's planted in the fall and comes up in the spring of its own accord. And so it's pretty far along. Um, now, will you be bringing this to, to market? I will, in fact, yeah, if the, if the okay. restaurants don't buy it up before I have a chance. Uh, is this what you call a cold frame? This is a cold frame. It does have um, plastic that can go over the top of it to protect it from wind or, um, or cold temperatures. And I've got this uh, heater inside. If it gets real cold, then I'll turn that on. And then I've got this fan, which is right up against a small hole in the greenhouse that that draws greenhouse air oh, okay. out and um, just keeps this not as warm as the greenhouse but um, a little bit warmer than the ambient temperature at night so they go from the greenhouse to the, to the cold frame to the cold frame to the market to the market to my garden to your garden that's oh, right okay.